Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about an app called G-Helper. For those that haven't heard of this before, it's an ASUS Armory Crate alternative. Uh, Armory Crate is not only used on the ROG Ally in its SE format, it is also used on most of the ASUS laptop lineup. For instance, on my X16 uh, ROG Flow that I had for a minute there, Armory Crate is used to control the CPU TDP limit as well as boost the GPU uh, clock speeds and its uh, total graphics power. Uh, however, some are not a fan of Armory Crate, and today I will show you one such alternative. Why would you choose this over ASUS Armory Crate? Well, some people consider Armory Crate excessive or classify it as bloatware. G-Helper aims to be a low resource app that offers most of the same core functionalities you would need, at least in respect to like display, TDP controls, things like that. However, it does lack any sort of input control for your controller. This means that if you uninstall Armory Crate completely, you will need to come up with some other option for your desktop input. One such tool is Steam Input or Rewazd. However, Rewazd is a paid option to my knowledge. Um, you could just leave Armory Crate installed on top of G Helper. However, that seems to be a little bit silly as G Helper is supposed to be a replacement for it. You could use Handheld Companion with it and gain back the functionality that way. However, that comes with its own issues, such as it not allowing inputs to work at times with certain games. I believe this has something to do with the Steam Input Override, where it does not recognize the Allies controller as Player 1. Now, there are some major benefits to G-Helper or Armory Crate, such as being able to set multiple TDP profiles with individual fan curves. As well, you can have CPU boost on or off through here as well. That was one of my main reasons for recommending Handheld Companion in the past, was for the on-the-fly CPU boost control. For those that aren't aware, I have completed videos on this topic in the past. However, as a quick recap, CPU boost should be enabled when playing more modern games on higher-end emulation, such as PS3, Nintendo Switch. Uh, the only times where CPU boost off is a plus is in FPS limited scenarios. For instance, were you to limit your FPS to 40, uh, you could potentially gain battery gains there, depending on the game. Uh, by turning CPU boost off. However, with it on, there was no measurable difference between battery life tests when in an uncapped uh, scenario. Now, CPU boost, it basically allows it to boost beyond its base clock. Uh, so on the ROG Ally, I believe that's 3.4 or 3.5 gigahertz off the top of my head. Um, and it doesn't allow it to boost up to 5.1 gigahertz that it's allowed to. Um, you'll likely never see the 5.1 gigahertz boost anyway. Um, but if you're in an FPS limited scenario, capping the CPU boost off and capping that CPU limit, it will leave it there and you will still get the same performance and the CPU won't be boosting over uh, what is necessary as in oftentimes in an FPS limited scenario, the CPU will still boost up and above. Um, however, with uh, G Helper, it does seem that the CPU and TDP control does seem to operate a little bit differently and we'll get into that. Now my recommendation for these profiles, uh, silent, you can set it anywhere between 10 to 13 watts. Just note that Dolby Access or Dolby Audio will not work or you'll get crackling audio at 10 watts. Uh, I set mine to 12 watts and that seems to be okay, but you can try 13 if you prefer. Um, for a balance mode, you can try to run anywhere between 15 to 18 watts, as this is where I find the ROG Ally gets its best performance uh, to battery life ratio. I put mine up to about 18 watts, usually in this balanced mode. Then for turbo, you can go full tilt at 25 or 30 watts sustained. Uh, this would most definitely be your docked or plugged in scenario. Now going over to the fans plus power menu, this is where we can control the TDP and fan speeds. You can have as many profiles as you want, however you can only have three that you can toggle through the quick access menu. Uh, the quick access menu when Armory Crate is disabled or uninstalled it will be accessed through the Armory Crate button on the right of the ROG Ally. Um, now, go, when you're in this menu, you can also set the CPU boost preferences here, uh, all the way from off to efficient and all through the aggressive modes. Um, you can try playing with efficient and efficient aggressive. However, in my testing previously, these modes didn't offer too much of a difference. However, feel free to try it out and let me know in the comments if you like or want to use G Helper. Now, 
What I can say about G-Helper though is when using their TDP modes, the boosting doesn't seem to be as aggressive. For instance, I can have my TDP set to 18 or 20 watts in Super Mario Odyssey running on Yuzu, and at times it will use that much power. However, in more simpler worlds, such as the desert world, which I think is the third world or so, I was seeing my TDP go as low as 12 watts at times while still maintaining the, the performance of 40 to 60 FPS, give or take. Whereas using the more aggressive boosting of Armory Crate, it would tend to keep me at or around that 18 watt mark. Now, why is this? Well, when you set a mode in Armory Crate, if you go into Windows and then the Power Mode settings, it will have your performance set to best performance when using Armory Crate. Whereas when you're using the balanced mode within G Helper, uh, it will actually set this performance mode to balanced in Windows. So in turn, it's not boosting up as much and you still seem to get a little, there probably is a negative performance hit, but it doesn't seem to be that great. And honestly, yeah, getting a lower TDP while still maintaining decent performance is I'm all for it, especially in emulation. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not all beer and roses. Like I said previously, it seems a little bit silly to be running G-Helper as well as Armory Crate. You can control your screen's refresh rate as well as if, if you have the XG Mobile GPU, you can toggle its use through here as well. However, when using it exclusively, you lose access to your controller functions in the desktop mode. Now, currently I have the Steam input set up for the ROG Ally to work as a regular controller. However, you do lose all the access to your features such as the back buttons, your command center, and obviously Armory Crate itself. You can have both Armory Crate and G Helper installed. Um, so when doing that, you can expect whatever performance pro file you set for the program, uh, whichever program you use last, that's the one that's going to take place. For instance, if you're playing a game and open G Helper to use one of your CPU boost off profiles, that profile will stick until you restart your device or use the Armory Crate profile uh, TDP change. Now you can go into the services for Windows. Uh, if you just type in t uh, services in your Windows search menu there, you'll see about nine services from ASUS. Some things you'll never likely use such as the link or even the ASUS switch functionality. However, if you want to maintain functionality of Armory Crate and more importantly, the command center button as well as the back buttons, you can disable all of them except for ASUS optimization. When I was going through flicking it off one by one, that seemed to be the one that controlled like the back buttons and command center. You'll still be able to go into Armory Crate um, so it's still a little bit wonky, um, but I mean, it does seem to work as intended if you want to have G Helper on as well. Now, if you don't want any ASUS services running at all, you can uninstall and disable them all. However, through G Helper under the extra menu, we can also stop or start all those services at the very bottom of the menu. Um, within this menu, you will also find controls for hotkeys, which are for the laptops. You, they don't work on the ROG Ally. These aren't for the button inputs or anything. Uh, the RGB behavior when putting the ally into sleep or hibernate mode and all that, that can be turned off here as well, such as the XG Mobile light as well. Um, now the AMD Very Bright stuff, uh, that's where it, it, in my opinion, tends to make the image look a bit more dull or plain. Uh, it's supposed to take like a snapshot of the screen and then adjust the brightness and the contrast based on the content. And it's supposed to save power and stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, I find it to be a little useless, and although it is advertised to save some battery life, I don't know, there's just, I, I wouldn't bother using it. But besides that, there's not much else to say about the application. You can set your charge limit at the bottom of the quick access menu there. Uh, you can change your RGB colors from the main splash page as well. And on the bottom left hand side, you'll see a button for updates. This seems to pull the machine's info and cross references it with the updates available online through ASUS. Uh, it does appear as though there is a manual kind of update button there. Uh, however, no updates have been pushed out since I've had this installed, so I don't know if this is reliable or not. It could be a potential replacement for my ASUS, which that would be nice because my ASUS is kind of, I don't know, eh, in my opinion. <laughs> um, now, should you go run out and uninstall Armory Crate and replace it with G Helper? No. 
Now, simply put, G Helper is more of a desktop solution. So although in my testing I had no issues with it, because I mainly use it as my ROG ally in desktop dock mode, um, it won't mean your experience will be trouble free. Again, expect to lose all access to desktop controls doing this. Another option could be to install Handheld Companion alongside G Helper. This would net you the best of both worlds if you had issues running Handheld Companion in the past with Armory Crates, mainly with the control inputs. This should work much better without any of the Armory Crate services installed. Now, there is another way through Steam input. However, you do lose access to your trigger dead zone setting control natively. Uh, you can control the joystick controls uh, dead zone. However, the trigger is your bust. So for example, my right trigger, I have an 88% dead zone set. So that means that it, like I have to reef on that trigger for it to be a full press. So when I was switching over to steam input and the uh, right trigger is supposed to be your left mouse button, I thought it just wasn't working because I was just tapping the button expecting it to work. And then I forgot that my dead zone settings weren't set because of armory crate. So I had to reef on that button to get that full press to register. So again, um, in racing games or even just in general, it's, it's a bad time having it like that. Now, would I recommend you check out this application? Absolutely. There's some handy things in there, especially the potential of getting rid of my ASUS and updating through G Helper instead. You can set CPU boost on and off on the fly, as well as tie it into three selectable profiles, with further profiles being available in the fan's power menu. Now, would I recommend ditching Armory Crate entirely? No. Uh, in my opinion, there are far too many features available and almost required to an extent with Armory Crate for a more casual user, I would say. Uh, yes, with the combination of handheld companion and G helper, you can get mostly there. You'll still lose access to the back buttons, or at least I could never get them to work with handheld companion. And because it is community software, although I'm not knocking the developers at all, they do fantastic work. These apps can break more so with the handheld companion application as we've seen, but G helper could break as well. Now, at the end of the day, Armory Crate is still a necessary evil, I think, at this point because of the command center and all of the features found within there for quick on the fly access of uh, your refresh rate, your volume, your brightness. I mean, right now, nothing else really beats it. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. However, it is the OEM intended way to use the device. Uh, as such, it will have better compatibility and likely more kind of thoughtful touches built into it, such as the trigger dead zone control. I'm not saying handheld companion can't one day outpace armory crate, just at this time, uh, it doesn't seem to complete directly with it. And same as uh, G Helper, to be honest. It, it, it's G Helper is definitely more of a desktop based application, not meant for handhelds. To wrap this video up, beyond giving thanks to my amazing channel members, Joey VR, Darkstar, Rico1217, and Rustlin, and uh, Moa, sorry. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for sticking with me through this far. I would not be offended if you dropped off, though. Do not feel as though this is ever a necessity or anything like that. Um, however, know that any and all funds received from membership donations, uh, super thanks, and AdSense, everything, it all goes back into the channel. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to watch this. Uh, before we go, I do want to bring to light the uh, Reddit and Discord groups for the ROG Ally. I will leave a link for the Discord group below. Now, they have put together a State of the Ally post. This is essentially a bug or issue tracker uh, designed to bring light to common issues and bugs, one such issue being the SD card reader. I myself have lost two SD cards to the ROG Ally at this point. I've sent an email request to the Adrian fellow that uh, posted their email from ASUS. Uh, so far, I've gotten a generic response by someone else uh, not named Adrian. Um, Adrian forwarded my letter to the uh, customer service, I suppose. They just told me to do an RMA and that was it. Uh, they didn't respond to my letter or any of my questions. Um, now, what can we as a community do? Um, if you've been plagued by any of these issues found on this list, especially if you have a faulty SD card reader, 
I implore you to email this point of contact at ASUS informing them of your displeasure. Please be respectful and kind. However, just know that I've spoken to community members who have had their devices RMA three times now, and every time their repaired device was faulty within a day or so. One case, I think it only took 12 hours, he said. Now, every time the SD card failed, that main board was replaced on the device. Now, with that information, it appears as though there could be an issue with the boards themselves. Uh, if that's the case, the lead time on new boards is tremendous. However, with ASUS remaining silent about the issue, they are expecting customers to send in their faulty units to be repaired, just for them to fail again. Now, why haven't they made any sort of further statement about this, other than what their form or BIOS update posts say? is beyond me at this point because it's doing more damage letting people like me or other people kind of spread rumors or misinformation but like we're just kind of getting what we're given here at this point that yeah the devices that have the broken sd card readers or faulty sd card readers the main boards are being replaced and that's supposed to be the repair for it however that repair is not a long-lasting repair apparently um now Again, if you've been affected by the SD card issues, please email this Adrian person. Um, if you have other issues, just email their other uh, ASUS contact point of form. But specifically for the SD card issues, email this person. Now, to quote Caesar in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, apes stronger together. Or apes together strong. I kind of butchered that. <laughs> but anyway, maybe my emailing won't do anything but the more noise created around the issue, the better. I would ask if you are interested or have been experiencing any issues, please join the ROG Ally Discord. The mods and members over there have been extremely helpful. As well, they have common things stickied and pinned. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, aside from that though, I hope you all have a great day.